everybody welcome to stone magpie as you'll see i'm in a different setting today for the video that i'm going to be showing you we're on holiday this week we've come to a lovely little seaside town called allenby in cumbria and i'm currently in the bedroom because the bedroom has the best view plus a dressing table so i'll be able to show you what i am working on whilst away on holiday i've brought all of the things that i got recently at Fancel's. I wanted to test it for like the summer break, how easy it was to transport, whether we'd need anything extra to bring with us if we're going to choose those type of products for our summer holidays. So this is going to be a mini review, a little bit of working on what I've been doing and a general chat. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you're comfortable. I hope you've got something on the go yourself and maybe a nice cuppa or some fizz next to you as well. So can you see out of the window view or is it too bright? Let me show you the view that I'm enjoying today. Here is that amazing view I've got from the window whilst I work on the projects in this bedroom. That is not our camper van, unfortunately. <laughs> and we've actually walked across the whole of that beach all the way round for where the eye can see. The first project that I started working on, you may not be surprised, is this wonderful box. So I have finished all of the sides. There we are. They took... Um, probably about an hour, hour and a half to do all of these and I didn't need anything other than the basic toolkit that came with the kit and what I noticed was all of the packets are self-seal so I didn't even need the extra tub that I brought. I was going to kit it all up, I've got even the labels in there didn't need it at all. So I just brought the box it came in and I've been able to do it from that. So I thought today, as we chat, I would do the lid of the box, which is here. Here we go, this is the lid of the box. Here are our crystals. some of which I've already used on the sides, mainly being the rounds and these marquees and the big AB round there. Oh, and some of the little teal marquee shapes too. So I haven't yet used the yellow ABs, these big pink marquee shapes or the big blue ones either, but the rest of them I've already delved into. So let's get our basic kit out. Don't actually need these self-seal bags. As I say, they all came in their own little baggie. So perfect because what I did I started with one side, I did all of the colours, so I think I started with the red which is the number five symbol and then I went on to the number four symbol, the number three symbol and completed one side and then I went on to the next side. So because they're in the self-seal bags I could do that, I didn't have to do all of the same number before moving on. I didn't even need any extra scissors to open up the bags or anything. As you can see, I'm using the pink wax that came with the kit. And I was a little bit worried about picking up the marquee shapes with my diamond pen, but actually I just popped it in the pink wax and it picked up beautifully without needing any extra tweezers. So nothing extra needed at all. So with the lid of the box, I'm thinking I might pull it down halfway-ish and start at the top and then move down. So I'm going to start with the number three symbol. 
because it looks like we've got quite a few of these. Just pour some into the green tray, give it a shake, and we can immediately start. Ooh, drop some out. Let's pick those ones up. go. So we have been really lucky with the weather so far because the weather forecast for the UK was supposed to be quite rainy and stormy. We did arrive in the rain on Saturday however it soon cleared up. We were able to do a little walk on the evening. Not too bad at all. You know what it's like when you go to somewhere for the first time. You want to get your bearings and just have a little stroll about. Let Monty have a good sniff around and see what's going on. Not too far from where we live, so it was only probably a couple of hours or so in the car. Not too bad at all. So we arrived on Saturday. tea time. Then it was really really lovely weather on the Sunday so much so that we did do a longer walk as I mentioned earlier up to the Roman fort. They've actually opened the new King Charles pathway the coastal path here so there were all like medieval flags and all sorts of um, information for the kids to learn about the Romans and things like that so it was really buzzing here at the weekend. We got talking to some people about bird watching and yeah it's been really lovely, a lovely break and so on Sunday it was so bright. I think as I say we walked along the coastal path went up to see the Roman fort at the top of the hill and then walked back along the coastal path again, stopped at the farm shop where we had a lovely cup of coffee and a nice cake. <laughs> Have to do that on holiday. And then set off walking back to our little cottage when we got back, <laughs> I had caught the sun quite a bit. Didn't realise because there was a bit of a sea breeze. So yes, a bit naughty really that. I've caught the sun, got a bit of sunburn on my neck. <laughs> and you know in the V of the, your chest area where your t-shirt goes into a V shape. Got a little bit burnt there too so had to slap lots of cream on. Um, but yeah, I didn't realise walking along the lovely coastal path that I was catching the sun like that. So you do have to be so careful. And when we got back to the cottage, <laughs> I realised that I'd taken my phone out of my pocket to take some pictures. And then, yep, you've guessed it just st stood up from the picnic bench after our lovely drink and wandered off without it. Oh dear, so when we got back to the cottage, I thought I can't walk all that way back again. So off I got into the car, drove back down the coastal path, <laughs> a lot quicker that way, parked in the farmyard car parking and just hoped that my phone had been handed in. So I walked over to the coffee shop. Now I walked over to the tent areas where some of the events were going on. There were some information tents and um, walked over there and asked if anybody might have seen my phone. And she said, oh yes, we have. We couldn't work out whose phone it was because on the front of my phone is a lovely picture of my son, Ben. <laughs> so of course nobody here would recognise him. So they were all trying to work out whether he was a volunteer for the day because of the Roman event. 
and so they what they done they put it in the coffee shop in case anybody came back to claim it so I then got in the queue for the coffee shop because it was rather long and a lady very kindly came over after about five, ten minutes and said, are you, you know, are you the person that lost their phone? I was like, yes, that's me. So she went over to the counter and retrieved my phone for me. And that's when she said we were all trying to work out who this was. <laughs> Whether he was a volunteer or did anybody recognise him? And I said, oh, no, you wouldn't recognise him. We're on holiday, um, but thank you so much for looking after my phone, whoever found it. I was very, very grateful to get it back because you are a bit of a, at a loss with your phone, aren't you? If, if you have everything on it, I don't even remember any phone numbers really now because it's all stored on there. You don't have to remember anybody's number, don't even know... Well, I don't know anybody's, don't know Ben's number, don't know Nick's number, nobody. Because we don't need to remember them anymore. And of course, if you do your banking on your phone, then you lose all of that too. So, yeah, the amount of information that we keep on our phones. I record my videos on my phone as well, so... <laughs> All of that valuable information. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, so luckily somebody had handed in. I was very, very lucky and very, very thankful. And everybody at the farm shop was so lovely and helpful. So, yes, we will be going there again to support their coffee shop and their venture. And, you know, it's a really good idea because... Obviously, it is a dairy farm and you could see the cows in the fields and it's just so nice to be sat there drinking their milk in their drinks. Um, and those that were having ice cream, you know, it was all the local produce. Really lovely. And that coffee shop, she said, opens four days a week. But the milk and cheese, you can actually buy 24-7 so they are open 24 hours, seven days a week. So I was asking her how that works and what they do inside the coffee shop is a vending machine, well, two vending machines, one for milk and milkshakes and one for the cheeses. So when the coffee shop's open, you can still use those vending machines if you don't want to wait in the queue or when the coffee shop is closed, they corner off the vending machines and they leave the doors open. Obviously, there, are, there is CCTV in there. And so you can go in at any hour and get your milk or milkshakes sh or your cheeses. And you just put your money into the vending machine and away you go. A brilliant, brilliant idea. Really impressed by that because the farms, they do struggle sometimes with making money over here in the UK. And I just thought it was a really inventive way to add extra income. And because it is a holiday seaside place, it's tiny. I mean, I'd say it's a resort, but really it's not a resort. It's more, it's very, very sleepy and beautiful for that. Very, very quaint. I was looking it up because we didn't really know much about the place. I'm just going to turn this so I don't. Um, we didn't really know much about the place and we wanted to come to somewhere different because normally we head over to the other coast where Whitby, Scarborough, etc. is. And we found Allenby just by looking at rental cottages where you could bring your dogs. And we said, oh, we, well, we've been to the lakes before in Cumbria, but we've never been to the coast. And 
booked the holiday cottage and didn't really give it any more thought, didn't really look into it anymore. So when we arrived on the Saturday and we went out for our little walk with Monty, we were amazed at the buildings around this little town because they are all so different. And some of them uh, look quite grand, some of them are typical sort of seaside houses that you would expect. Really all very different though. I'm going to get some more pink wax. And there is like a little beck running through and then the coast. And on the other side of the view of the coast is like a mountainous region. So again, we were like, oh, well, what's over at the other side from the sea? And when we saw the maps, we realized it's Scotland. So we can see um, Scotland across the sea view, but yet, so say that's to the right of us, and then to the left would be the mountains of the Lake District. And in between is this town, which what we found out from our research was actually built. The Quakers arrived to do the salt pans and get the salt from the sea. And that's what industry they did here and built the housing and all of the buildings around. So it's been really interesting to do a bit of research on that. A quaint, quaint little town to visit. So if you ever come over to the UK, it might be one for you to visit, even if it's for a day or two and then to move on we're here as a base for a week, as I said, and today we've actually been up to Sillith, which again is a very small seaside town, this time Victorian. So it had very wide roads and cobbled streets and Victorian buildings all around very, very open. And it also has 34 acres of green parkland. So Monty was in his element because he had the green park to discover as well as a very long promenade, which we walked some of. There's a small harbour there too. And very, very nice. Felt very genteel there, quite grand in, compar on, in comparison to Allenby. And we think it's the, the width of the roads and the fact that the main parts of the front are cobbled. So nice. We did stop for a lovely cup of tea and scone at a place called, oh no then, uh, it was either, I think it might have been Fairy Tale Cafe. It's fairy, fairy something anyway. And I had a cheese scone for a change with a chilli jam. Oh my goodness, this chilli jam was heavenly. So much so that when I finished it, I did go in and ask if they sold the jam because I would have definitely got a jar or two to take home, but unfortunately they had run out and it is a local jam that's made close to Maryport, I believe. So I might have to try and find some of that somewhere because it was absolutely delicious. So yes, lots of treats that we've had so far on our holiday. And we've only been here, today is Tuesday. So we've only been here three days. Something
something like that. A bit windy today, I must admit, down by the coast. We were blown around quite a bit. <laughs> On the way back out of Allenby, we took, um, out of Silith, I mean, sorry, we did take a little country road and there was a warning sign before we set off along it saying cattle for a mile. So we just thought the cattle would be by the side of the road, but oh, <laughs> as we were driving through, no, the cattle were actually on the road. So I did take some photos because they were very very close to the car it was very slow going along that road <laughs> and at one point i counted six bulls as well luckily they weren't that close to the car because i think i might have um, been even more worried but yes so that was a little adventure too driving alongside the cows who just kept randomly crossing the road you know they weren't bothered I wasn't driving, so I was saying, oh, please go slowly. Just randomly step out into the pathway. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We eventually got down that road and back onto the main roads. It was a relief, I can tell you. <laughs> okay, so we've done the top half of those number three crystals really lovely detail in that gold let's do number four next which is this bright orange crystal and do you remember these parts here are not diamond painted they're like a green leather effect and are not sticky so that works really well it's like it's studded along the leather design i like that so the number fours outline there. Just turn that slightly too. And let's see what this is going to look like along here. Because it's it looks like it's on quite a pale gold background, this one. There we are. And really, really easy to place. I have to say that if you are a beginner or you want to buy this for somebody that hasn't done a diamond painting before. This kit is easy peasy lemon squeezy. As I was saying early on in the video, you do not need anything extra at all. Not even a pair of scissors, no storage, nothing. You can start where you want to. You can do as much as you want and then leave it and then come back to it it's really really quick going so you see the results very quickly i'm loving it i love these simple projects to take away just so that if you have a spare hour or two you can do a little bit of crafting because you know we're all addicted really aren't we come on let's face it my name's Suzanne and I'm addicted to diamond painting and I don't mind admitting it at all. I think if I was to come away on a holiday without any of my kits to work on, yeah, I would be struggling. <laughs> struggling to stay sane. <laughs> um, I did wonder whether I'd be able to take this down to the beach and work on it at the seaside on the seashore however I changed my mind and the one reason is because with the sand if it's quite blowy which it has been then I think you don't really want to risk the sand sticking to your sticky surface so for me I'm avoiding the beach I'm just coming back to the cottage and working on the design here If you were abroad next to a beautiful swimming pool with cocktails beside you and oh, the heat of the sun and just wearing your bikini and your sarongs and 
oh, sipping on those cocktails, um, then yes, I would definitely say for that sort of scenario, perfect. Apart from perhaps if you have too many cocktails and then the placing of the diamonds may not <laughs> be quite square on. <laughs> you may have to do a little bit of adjusting when you look at it again in the morning. <laughs> but yes, I'm really, really impressed with this kit. And it's going to be so great to have it as a storage box once it's finished. Now, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to finish the diamond painting itself and then I'm going to pop it all back into it, the box it came in. I'm not going to build it on holiday because I want to be able to pack it easily back in my case to take home. And then once I get home, I'll be able to build it very quickly there. I think that's the sensible thing to do. I will be dying to build it, I have to say. I will be so excited about getting it completed. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure if I built it, how easy it would be to take apart once it's built, where, how you know solidly it slots together. So I'm just going to have to be patient and it'll be something to look forward to when we get home. Oh, do you know, when I get home, I know I have got three packages waiting for me. <laughs> because one of the packages arrived just as we were about to set off. Oh, so I can't wait to get those open and unboxed to show you. Really, really excited about it. So I'm not wishing our holiday away. However, there are still things to look forward to once the holiday is finished. So no holiday blues for me. <laughs> See, that's a good way, isn't it, of being excited to get back home afterwards. Have these lovely things waiting for us to do. So at this point, I am going to say, please do consider subscribing. Thank you if you already do. I really do appreciate you. I love the fact that you come back, leave me comments, watch again. And um, yeah, a massive, massive thank you for that. My little heart, thank you. So if you're not already subscribed, then please do consider doing so because I don't have um, a predictable upload schedule. I just upload as and when I can because I'm not able to craft all the time. I do have a full-time job and so I can't predict when my videos are going to come out. I do try and do one a week, sometimes two a week and they're just random days when they get uploaded. So if you do enjoy the channel, then please do subscribe so that you can see the adventures that I get up to in diamond painting and do ding the bell to be notified of when the videos are ready for you to see. This pattern is gorgeous, isn't it? So lovely two colours in so far and it's so striking. I think I like that background being so dark as well. The bits that we're not diamond painting just bring out these colours so beautifully. Absolutely gorgeous and then when that teal blue goes in, pow, it really does create even more drama. This kit is from Fancels. It is a jewellery box design. However, because it is 
an empty box. There are no compartments in it or anything. That's the base. So when you put the sides on and the lid on, it is one complete box. I don't think it need be jewellery. I think it could be a little storage box for all sorts of things. And when I unboxed it, I did actually mention it would be good for our diamond pens, our washi tapes, things like that. So something for you to think about if you're interested. I will put the link below in the description box if you want to find this particular one. They do do different designs as well. And this box was £8.99. So let's get some of this teal crystal in the number two symbol. Let's see how this looks now. I am going to do all of the rounds in this top bit and then we'll put in the special shapes to finish. I don't know if I'll get the full lid done with you on camera, but I will continue obviously. <laughs> And then I will show you the finished result as a photograph. And then once I build it, when I get home, I will probably add that in as well so you can see the finish. Now, as I mentioned, I did bring everything that I unboxed from Fancels with me because it was, well, you saw the size of the package if you watched that unboxing. So it was easy to transport and so therefore, I've still got my mirror to work on. I've still got the LED lights. And again, if I get time to do all of those, the mirror not so much, but the lights, I would definitely wait till I get home to put those together because I do need to discover how to do that. And I wouldn't want those getting crushed in my luggage on the way home. So I could do the diamond painting and then build it when I get home. So it'll be interesting whether I need the storage box that I brought with me. I think it depends on whether I do my magpie picture. I'm just going to have a look. Ah, now then, I just had a thought then with the mirror. They are in those packets. But thinking about it, if I finish this kit, I could maybe use these self-seal bags to use for this kit so it means I could have a little project on the go as well as my magpie picture. We'll see, we'll see because we will be out and about discovering the area. So not going to be in all of the time diamond painting. <laughs> I'd be like one of those little children, wouldn't I? I don't want to go out. I'm too busy. <laughs> do you ever have that when you were a child? Or do you have children and you remember where the tantrums occurred because you needed to go out somewhere or you wanted to go for a walk and they were not into walking at all? Yes. Been there, done that. Quite a relief to have those days over. <laughs> I tell you what though, I'll tell you a story about what happened just before we set off. Oh, we were so lucky. Honestly, I did a massive grateful thankfulness after this because we weren't able to get into the holiday cottage until four o'clock. Um, we couldn't be any earlier than that. So what we decided to do was to have a relaxed morning. We would pack and then I always like to do the housework before we set off for holiday. I like to change the bed so that we've got nice clean bedding when we get home, clean towels, things like that. And it's all hoovered and dusted and, you know, those sorts of jobs before we go. So because we didn't need to set off at the crack of dawn, we had a leisurely morning, 
getting ready, did the packing, had some lunch and then we were doing the housework and we were a little bit delayed in the end. We were about 15 minutes later than what we thought we would be setting off at and after doing some hoovering my husband disappeared and then I heard the what sounded like a shower and I thought oh he's you know freshening up washing his hair whatever before we set off and then I walked into the utility room to put the hoover and things away and he was in there and I said oh what are you doing in here? I thought you were in the shower. I can hear the shower. Why is the shower on? And he's like, the shower isn't on. Oh, so we walked back through. We could hear the water and went into the bathroom. And no, the shower's not on. Walked into the guest toilet and yep, water streaming out luckily clean water because it was from the main pipe which had burst there was water flooding out of the little toilet so quickly grabbed some towels put them on the floor by which time the water was probably about an inch deep out of the door because the carpet outside of the bathroom or outside of the little toilet i should say um was soaking up all of the water. So it was a little bit of a disaster. So we had to, well, I went and grabbed the mop, started mopping it all up. Nick ran to turn off the main um, water tap. So he managed to find that okay, because we've never had the cause to find it before. So he found that, turned it off, stopped the water, well, it was, pounding out really, out of the burst pipe. So we managed to get it all mopped up. The towels we just threw into the washing machine. I was going to actually drain, I was gonna put them on a spin before we set off, which I forgot to do. So they will be sat there in the washing machine, sodden wet, yuck. But anyway, that's a job to do when we get home. <laughs> but we managed to get it all as dry as we could. Weren't we lucky that we hadn't already set off? If we'd set off at the time we were going to, that water would have been streaming out, gushing out, I should say, for a whole week. The house, because we live in a bungalow with just like um, a bit of an upstairs hobby room, so everything in the house would have been destroyed. The sofa, the kitchen, the bedrooms, everything would have been underwater. Gosh, we were so lucky. Yes, we've got that job to sort out, to fix that pipe when we get home. But whew, when you think what could have happened... <laughs> It's an easy fix, by the way. I think it was just some sort of seal on the pipe itself had withered. So not too big a job, but it was too big a job to do before we set off. And so the water we just left off instead. Wow. Okay, going to do number ones next. What colour are the number ones? Look at that beautiful teal blue and how that sets off that gold and orange. Just stunning, isn't it? Oh, and now we've got the clear crystals for our number one. And what I found about these ones is that they are so clear. Sometimes it's quite hard to see if that's the silver background or the clear crystal on the top. So I might have to squint a bit at these. 
those up, turn that, and fill in all the way along here to really highlight these lines of the design. Wow, it really brightens that up, doesn't it? And against this dark finish, I wonder what the number eights are. I think they might be the yellow AB cabochons, looking at the size of those. Again, that will look like studs across, won't it? Mm, beautiful. I am using my different reading glasses whilst doing this, so <laughs> I am hoping that I'm pretty bob on with where I'm putting the diamonds, but I will have to check afterwards and just maybe squidge them along a little bit, if not. I left my usual reading glasses at home because I didn't want to break them because they are my favourite ones to diamond paint with. So I brought some different ones. I actually brought two pairs. I had a pair for the bedroom because even though I always read at bedtime, I read with a Kindle and my eyesight is so bad that I do have to have the writing really big and wear reading glasses as well to read my Kindle. It's really bad. Um, so I wanted a pair in the bedroom and I wanted a pair for my crafting. Well, the other night I was a bit restless in bed. So I woke up in the early hours of the morning and thought, OK, I better read again to try and get myself back to sleep because it was silly o'clock. And... I put my reading glasses on and I don't know quite what happened but I sort of came I came round awake with a bit of a jump and the lens of my glass glasses on my left eye had come out and hit me in the eye <laughs> so I don't quite know how but the frame underneath has snapped and um, it's created, it gave me a bit of a bloodshot eye underneath. You can't really see it when you look straight at me, thankfully. Um, so I don't quite know what's happened there, but I've broken my reading glasses for bedtime. So now I'm relying on this one pair. And in bed last night, I was thinking, oh no, what did I do? Because I don't want to do it again with this pair and it happened again. So I don't know what I did. But I, again, quite lucky that I didn't do too, too much damage to my eye. Just a little bit bloodshot. It's annoying though, not knowing what happened. It's that um, feeling, isn't it, when you read in bed and you fall asleep whilst you're reading, especially if you're holding a book in your hand and um, the, the book drops onto the floor and makes a big clatter. Sometimes I drop my Kindle and... Uh, find it in the morning on the floor. Like, oh, must have fallen asleep reading last night.
but I always liked the feel of a real book. It took me a long time to get into having a Kindle. I was reluctant about it for a long time because I do like the feel and the weight of a proper book, turning the pages and the smell of the pages. I know it might sound a bit strange, but I just used to love that. But it did get to a point where I couldn't read without my glasses and a light. So, and I read to go to sleep and having a book light on and glasses on and holding the book in bed it just got it just got silly too much really and I couldn't see the pages properly and things like that so I gave in and got a Kindle and I have to say at least I can bring away more than one book with me and it's the same sort of size because the Kindle it's just on the Kindle so I have, I have now got used to, to it and I do see the benefits of having it backlit as well. So much easier nowadays. Right, so just a couple of number ones here to bring out that detail. Any others? Oh yes, I've got that little arch. Yeah. Then I think we might be done with the number one. So let's fill in the number fives, which is that red crystal. So again, we're going to introduce another colour. This red. Not that many of these ones in this area. And then we'll be on to the special shapes. And of course, a lot of these ones I've not used yet. So we'll see how the diamond pen copes with picking up the bigger special shapes. See if you would need to bring some tweezers away with you if you wanted to complete this kit on holiday. We will find out in a minute. So have you been working on some amazing projects yourself? What diamond paintings are you working on? Or are you, like me, doing some practical products? Please do let me know in the comments. I always love to know what you're working on. And it really does help me too, because if I've not seen or heard of the diamond painting, then I do tend to look it up and have a, a bit of a nosy, find out more. Um, because I do look around a lot of different sites and sometimes I miss certain designs. I'm thinking, well, how did I miss that one? <laughs> I'd love to do that one. So when you share what you're doing, it does help me too. So thank you for that. I do have my eye on another painting. I know I'm, all, I'm so naughty, aren't I? I've got so many lovely paintings to work on, but I do have my eye on something that I've seen recently and it is going to be in a pre-sale and I don't think, um, with being away on holiday at the moment, I don't think I'm going to be in with a chance of getting it this time round, but luckily it's not a limited edition, so we'll see. Might have to wait for that one. But as I say, I've got so many beautiful paintings to work on that I'm not complaining. Okay, they are the number fives. And again, that's created another level of colour on this box lid. So shall we do, shall we do the number tens first with those being up at the top? Oh, there they are, the pink marquee. Okay, if I can't pick these up with my diamond pen, I think I'd get away with using my fingers. They are so big. 
So let's have a try first. Oh, easy to pick up with a pen and place it down. Brilliant. So we do not need any extra tweezers for this shape. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. My jeweled box. Gorgeous. Oh, do you know, I have been treasure hunting on the seaside. I've got a couple of things I found. I found lots more sea glass, but they're not on my, on my dressing table. And I found this wonderful shell as well. I just loved the design of that. Really gorgeous. So if I got another box as well, I could use these for my sea treasures. Ooh, that would be a lovely idea for a box like this. <sighs> so many ideas. I'm going to end up with so many of these boxes. I did wonder about whether to make a picture with this because it did remind me of like a, a lady's dress with all of that detail on. If you imagine some legs and a maybe a sea glass head and make a little picture out of it. <laughs> Could maybe diamond paint a background for that picture with the spare diamonds create some sort of effect of a background oh i think that would look really pretty and it would always remind me of my holiday especially if i used leftover diamonds from this kit with me completing it whilst we're away that would be nice wouldn't it that would be a lovely memento These are lovely, these AB capuchons. Like I say, studded along the lid. Love those, really sweet. Okay, let's get the number 11s. Uh, oh, got these AB with the carved flower or stars, whichever you think. I think they might be stars, actually. Oh, so pretty. Okay, we'll do the number nines and then I will leave it there. So the number nines are this blue teardrop, oh, the teal blue. Oh wow, that could be fabulous. Nearly scratched it then and must be careful. If you if you pop it down and try and manoeuvre it, then do be careful you don't scratch it because I think I nearly did there. And I'm not sure how many spares we get. Ah, oh, isn't that fab? very carefully into place there and in fact I think that's all we need for the number nines oh no there's there is another one down at the bottom and I've got four so I got three spares okay that is what we have completed together so what I will do I will continue another time to finish the lid and I will show you the finished result. 
Hello, another day here in Allenby. Well, when I finished the video with you earlier, I did continue working on the lid and here is the result. I'm really pleased with it. I love the colours in this one and I'm looking forward to building it when I get home. So today I'm going to work on the mirror and see how easy that project is to do with what we're given in the kit. Here is the finished result of the lid that I continued with after the last filming in the video. I did notice that there seems to be a crystal missing there, so we'll quickly correct that. And I will then show you the leftovers from the kit. So I just need to get one of these gold number threes out. So I hope that wasn't bothering you too much during the filming, <laughs> if that was shouting out to you. But here it is now completely finished. Really pleased with the design of this one. Really can't wait to get home and build this box. These are going to be the sides. So that will go like that. Ooh, it's going to be so gorgeous. So, pop those aside and I'll show you the leftovers from the kit. So we have got lots left. So I will be able to sort these out into the containers that I've got at home for various special shapes and round crystals. So now all we need to do is pop these pieces back into the box until I get home. Now, to protect that, I'm going to put the lid on the top and then put those pieces there. And we don't really need to put these back in the box, so I'll keep those separate so that they're not squished in. And today I'm going to work on the mirror and let's see just how much we need as extras or how we get on with this one being a project for the holidays. Now, I can't remember this one having two toolkits, so I might have just popped an extra toolkit in by accident. I think it came with the basic one without the self-seal bags. So we'll put that one aside. And as mentioned earlier, these packets are not self-seal, so we will need an extra pair of scissors. Luckily, the cottage that we're renting is well equipped I mean, they are massive scissors. <laughs> and we can see the different symbols on these packets. And we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different colors. Now, what I'm gonna say is that I would have probably gone by symbol, finished all of the symbols, but this one's double-sided, so obviously if we take the sticky cover off, then if we did it the same side, we're going to stick when we turn it over to work on the other side. So this one, I think, is trickier to do without any sort of storage. And with only having one green tray, we wouldn't be able to put the extras in separate trays unless we pre-planned and brought more trays with us. So I've got my thinking cap on and I'm going to think about using another tray as well. So if I pre-plan this, I'll bring the tray from the other kit. I might as well use the same pink wax as what I was using before. 
and I'm going to use two trays alongside each other. So in my mind, my thinking is I'm going to do two different colours in each tray. I'm going to complete one side with those colours and then turn it round and hopefully we'll have enough of the crystals down so that it doesn't stick to my dressing table. So that's the plan. To make sure I know exactly which colours we're doing, I'm going to do contrasting colours. So I'm going to do this dark green, which is the number eight symbol. And I'll leave some in the packet as a reminder so we don't forget. Then I'm going to leave the special shapes for last. So what other colours do we have? We've got a clear, an orange, a brown and a green. So I'm going to keep the green separate and I'm going to keep the brown and the orange separate. So let's do let me see the symbols because I want to make sure we get lots down. I'm going to leave the crosses and I will do the orange and green together because they are a good contrast. You won't get those mixed up. So that's A and 8. And I'm going to do symbol T, which is the clear crystal. with the pale green H. Ooh, they are quite similar actually. <laughs> mm. Okay, perhaps I should have done the brown, but never mind, I've done it now. <laughs> Going to take the protective cover off the top. So I've still got the one on the bottom. As you can see, it's quite slidey, it's not sticking. Get some pink wax on my pen and I'll start with the dark green number eight symbol because there are quite a lot of those. So just picking them up with the diamond pen as usual and popping them down into the right place. So I'll speed up the video at this point and I'll join you again once the number eights are complete. Okay, that's the number eights done. So we're moving on to the orange, which is the capital A symbol. Quite a few of these around. And again, we're just placing one by one because we're not able to multiplace. We don't have a multiplacer on the end of the diamond pen either. So no need for that. We're just going to carry on single placing all the way around and because of that, we don't have to be too lined up, which is another good reason why beginners could do this sort of project. We don't have to be really exact. We're just placing them on the correct symbol. So once you've got the technique of filling your pen with the pink wax to make the end sticky, that just enables the diamond to be picked up and you place it down. Okay, so that's those two colours finished on this side. Now, I really wish that I'd done a different colour <laughs> than green and clear. Anyway, there we go. We'll do the clear next, which is the T symbol that just goes around the outside and a little bit in the middle. And let's hope I don't pick up any of the greens by accident. <laughs> okay, that is the T symbol. And next we're working on the H symbol for the greens. Put in a clear one by mistake. Pick that 
one off. So it was actually quite easy to see the difference between the clear and the green. Okay, so that is that side done. Now it feels okay to turn it over. So what I'm going to do is leave this protective layer down, but pull that off, turn it over and lay that side down. It's not going to stick. So we're okay to continue and repeat exactly the same process. I'm starting with the dark green. You can, of course, start anywhere you want to. There isn't any fixed rules. So start with any colour that you want to start with. I'm just going to repeat it because I think that worked really well. Doing the dark green first, then to the orange. Okay, now we have completed both sides of those two colours. I'm going to say that obviously they're now mixed up, so putting these back into the packets could be quite tricky, especially as we've only got a green tray and not a funnel tray. So I'm going to say it would probably be a good thing to have some self-seal bags. And yes, I've got two colours together, so what I'm going to do is put them all into one bag, like so, and then when I get home, I will sort them out into their colourways to put it into my storage. Of course, if you're not bothered about keeping your crystals, then you don't have to do that. Um, the packets, of course, are split with no way of sealing those. So I'm going to fold those over and put them into the self-seal packet as well. So I would say this kit isn't as easy as the box. Because with the box we didn't have any problems because they were already in their self-seal bags and we didn't need scissors. So here's the first packet. Do exactly the same with the clear and green which are going to be a bit trickier to sort out when I get home because they are so close in colour. <laughs> Oh dear. I would recommend if you're going to do it this way to do the clear and brown perhaps instead. Oops. I mean, maybe if you're having to pre-plan ahead, because I was quite lucky that I had these self-seal bags with me, if you're going to pre-plan, I would say perhaps bring a few green trays or um, I could have used the storage unit but because it's such a quick project this one I thought I'd leave that storage unit for a different kit. Okay, so these are my spare crystals for those colours. So what have we got left? We have got a brown and the special shapes. So we'll do brown. Which is symbol central point to pick 
out those greens and clear crystals. This is a pretty colour actually. I call it brown, but it, it's like... Um, um, a dark golden brown. It's a very pretty colour. And this is a quick kit to do. So if you're wanting perhaps a project for a teenager's holiday and you want them to just be a little bit occupied for an hour, this could be a good option, especially as it's a mirror, because then they can um, check themselves out in the mirror afterwards. Okay, so that's all for the brown. Turn it over and do the other side. Of course, it doesn't have to be the teenagers. This kept me quiet for an hour. Turn that over and make sure. Yes, I did do those. Okay. So again, I'm going to put the leftovers in a bag. And this kit didn't come with self-seal bags. I did check because I did put an extra toolkit in this one when I packaged it up for my holiday. So, okay. Now, which one should we do first? Okay, let's do these little teardrops. which are the O symbol. Now I'm going to pop a bit more pink wax on to pick up these special shapes. O. Now the special shapes Adding these always brings out so much, I don't know, they just finish off these sorts of projects so beautifully, don't they? I mean, special shapes make them look special. The round crystals with all of their different colours just set off the base for the special shapes, for it all to come together. I usually leave the special shapes to last. Do you? Or do you like to set those first and then work on the rounds? Okay, that's those. Now I am going to put all of my special shapes in one self-seal bag because they're all so different that I can sort those out when we get home. Put those in and move on to Do the N next with these marquees. Oh, these are very pretty. 
AB Marquees. Look at that. Oh, wow. Lovely. Turn it over. I hope you can see all of the colours pinging out from this AB finish because it's a pale green base but there's purples and pinks, blues, really really pretty. Okay just do a quick check, got those all lovely. So again these in and finally these metallic. Now you would think these are clear crystal however you place them down for the metallic to face upwards and that's because the stones themselves are curved. I think they're made for um, a different sort of project but we use them for the gold because they lay flat with the crystal down so I know sometimes it's a bit of a shame that we're losing the crystal finish but just look at the metallics we get If we did try and put them, I'll, I will try and show you, if we did try and put them crystal down, you can see there that they would sit, but they're not fixed, they rock. So for diamond painting, we want flat side down. I love this gold finish. that side. Give them a quick press down and repeat on the other side. Of course with the teardrops we want to make sure the points are pointing towards the centre like the shape is showing where the symbol is. I'm going to have some leftovers for these. <laughs> right. Okay, that is our mirror finish. Now I'm just pressing them down to make sure that they're sitting nicely. Now, one thing I'm going to say is that it is slightly sticky. Don't know if you can see around the edge it is a little bit sticky so when I get home I'm going to try I've never tried it before but I have seen people use a mica powder and they brush it on very gently very not thickly just a small thin layer of mica powder or eyeshadow now I don't have any mica powder I've never used it before so I'm going to use a eyeshadow when I get home to try and remove some of the stick from the surface it's not massively sticky but it's tacky and I don't want anything sticking to my beautiful mirror in my handbag 
but I am so pleased with that finish. It looks so lovely. So again, popping all my spares, and I do have a lot of spares. Not so many marquees, a few teardrops, but I've got loads of those, so I'm pleased about that. Pop them in the self-seal bag. So I would say for a holiday project, it would probably need a little pre-planning you would need some scissors and depending on how you would do your crystals you would either need more than one green tray or a little storage container and some way of keeping your crystals afterwards if you want to. I will cover those back up with the protective covers until I've got rid of the stickiness. And I'll put the toolkit back together. There we are, another holiday project completed. Okay, time for kit three. And kit three is actually kit three and four, because if you remember, we had two sets of these LED lights. Now, I'm going to do my favorite set, because you know I can't resist. And this one, I loved the diamonds in. Here we go. So the kit in this one again has the self-seal bags. However, we don't necessarily need them for all of the diamonds. We'll put these elements aside because although I'm working on the lights, I'm not going to build them while I'm on holiday because they will get crushed in our packaging in the packing case on the way home. So again, it is a kit that will need to be finished once we get back. Okay. So this one was the kit that had the glitter teardrop shapes, which I just loved. So many interesting different shapes in this one. And the special shapes are all in self-seal bags already for this kit. Great. But we do have four rounds that are in the packet. So we will need our scissors still. Let's open this tool kit. Because I'm hoping we have four self-seal bags. Let's have a look. Oh yes, one, two, three, four. We get five self-seal bags. So that's good news. It means that even though we need scissors, we can put them in here as part of our kitting up. So what I'm going to do is kit these up first before we begin this time. Pop those aside. Number one is the clear. So I'm going to pour all of these in here and so that I remember which symbol is the clear, I'm going to cut out this to pop into the self-seal bag. So all of these go in here very carefully because it's not a funnel tray. <laughs> there we go. And the number one.
making sure that we seal the bag really well so they don't all spill out. Perfect. And we do the same for all of the different packets. Not many in pack two. So cut out number two. And this will just make it easier while we're doing the different lights. Because I don't want to work on all three at the same time. I want to do one and then perhaps have a break and do another one. So if I was working on all three, I may be tempted not to do this part and just do all of the number ones on all three lights and then move on to the next. Remembering if you do that, you may have to cover it back up for the sticky surface unless you're going to do all three lights all at the same time. This lovely blue for our symbol number three. And lastly, our number four, which is a bright green crystal. Now you may remember me saying that these were described as Christmas LED lights. However, I don't think they're particularly Christmassy and I would say they are festival lights. So if you are planning to go on a holiday where there may be a festival going on, of course, you'd be able to build your lights whilst you're on holiday. So that would be a nice idea. Okay, so that is all our prep done for the kit. Now all I need to do is choose which light I'm going to work on. I've got these beautiful designs. I'm tempted to work on this one because I think that number 12 is going to be those glitter teardrops. And I want to see how many spares because I want lots of spares of those. I love those. So let's do this design. Okay, so now all of those are sorted into the packets. We no longer need our scissors, so we can put those aside. And we've got two sides of the light to complete. So we remove the sticky protective layer and it is not sticky around the outside. So what we're gonna do is get our number three, which is the teal blue. We probably won't use all of the colours in this one light because we have got all of the other colourways in this pack. So, get some pink wax on our pen and we can start to diamond paint. I will speed up the video while I complete this light with the diamond painting and then we'll come back and see what we think. And because we've got the self seal bags, we don't need to do the other side at the same time. We can complete one side at a time if we want to. So number four symbol, this lovely bright green. We've got a few around the edge here. Now you can see the card is starting to curl up a little bit. I'm not sure 
on once it's finished about how it bends back. I still don't know how this is put together. I do know that there are holes that we need to push through for the LED light to shine. And apart from that, it's all a bit of a mystery. <laughs> so I will have to find out when I get home how this is all made. Now, I did have a viewer mention that there are instructions on the website about how to make the lights. And yet, when I looked, I still couldn't find them on the Fancel's website. So I will have another look and see where they could be. Otherwise, I might just have to make it up and work <laughs> and work it out. Okay, so number ones, we've got a few towards the middle. These blues and greens are great for the seaside feel. Blues and greens are always so fresh, aren't they? And then we've got this clear crystal towards the middle, sparkling through. Can't wait to see what the lights are going to be like when they shimmer through the holes in the card. Again, because they are the self-seal bags, really simple to complete whilst you're away. It's really just those four to start off with that are a little bit awkward, but easy fixed. And because the kit comes with the self-seal bags, it's, e you know, it's even easier. Right, let's do the number sevens. Number seven is, what is number seven? Um, oh, it's these really pretty AB circles with the carved detail in. Oh my goodness, they are so gorgeous. I love, love, love the diamonds in this kit. I, when I opened them, I was just absolutely astounded by them all. Much more so than the other pack I got, but they are very different. So if you can't choose between them, I would still recommend that you get both. Have a look at my unboxing if you didn't see that, because these two LED light kits are so different. It's just that the special diamonds in this one are gorgeous. So cute, aren't they? These gorgeous little AB rounds. And having that carved detail in them too just brings another element to it. Oh, it's so pretty. Yes, I think this one could be for Christmas because of the blues, greens and the um, those ABs and clear crystals, but I don't, I still don't think it has to be purely Christmassy. Right, number 11. Ooh. Oh, these are lovely, really nice gold teardrops with facets. Oh, beautiful. Look, oh wow. Oh wow. Really nice and makes a difference from the metallic teardrops that we had earlier being the faceted crystals in this pale, beautiful topaz gold brown. Again, elevating the look with the special crystals. Number nine next. What's number nine? Oh, what number was that? Oh, sorry, got that wrong. These were number fives and I've put them on number 11s. Yeek. 
but we do need the number fives here <laughs> in the middle. So I'll just I'll do an adjustment. Apologies about that. Got a bit too excited about those. We'll see what the number 11s are in a minute. <laughs> Just picking those off with my diamond pen, putting them in the correct place. <laughs> Oops. And funnily enough, there are the same number of diamonds needed for each. So I could have left those there and used the number 11s where the number 5s are now. But... Um, Let's do it properly. <laughs> okay, so the number 11s are actually these blue cabochon ABs. So the correct number 11s now go in. Uh, see, so we could have used either or really. I think they would have looked good either way round. So I just did that on purpose so that you could see the alternatives. <laughs> Use that as an excuse. Okay, there we are, number 11's in. So number nine next. Which one's number nine? Number nine, oh, the gold studs. Okay, so I'm going to take it back. I think really you do need to use the blues because if those were round here, I think it wouldn't give as much difference with the gold, whereas the gold being a little bit separate looks fabulous. So yeah, they know what they're doing, these diamond painting companies. <laughs> Okie dokes. Done. And we're getting to the glitter. Glitter teardrops. And this hasn't taken long at all. So a really nice quick project that's hopefully quick to build when we get to that point. And let's get this teardrop in. Oh, party! And this is one of the reasons why I think these could be great for festivals, not just Christmas. Struggling to pick these up a little bit with my diamond painting pen, so I'm going to use my fingers on these ones. Wow! Aren't these fabulous? Fabulous! Get the party started. And because the lights are double sided, we're going to have this design on the other side as well. If they do happen to turn around, once you string them, it won't matter at all. So lovely that they are double sided and not just diamonds on one side. I love it, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I haven't got the number 13 in. Number 13, oh, I can see what it is. It's a big round cabochon AB in blue. Right, just get one of those. To finish off that center. Ta-da! Ta-da, there we are, there is the light. So imagine when this is turned over, that 
is what's going to be hanging down and the LED shining through. Absolutely beautiful. And as you can see on the back, here are the holes that we would poke through, easily come out, just pushing very gently on the side. And I would push it front to back so that when you turn it over, the finish at the front is nicely cut. If you pushed it this way, you might get a bit of white showing through. And looking at the card, it does look like there are guidelines of where you fold it. So perhaps these are star-shaped lights. So as I say, we will find out more when I work out how to build it. And I'm not going to do that on holiday. <laughs> or should I try and fold it in to show you the shape? Don't know, I'd quite like to get the instructions because I really don't want to spoil them. I think it goes inwards. I think it folds in like this. I'm still not sure what those sticky tabs are for that came with the kit. But I think it's going to look something like that. Oh, lovely. Oh, so lovely. Right, so I'm going to say that this kit is really easy to take away and work on. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you making the lights unless you're going to use them on holiday for your festival. <laughs> so the fact that most of them are in the self-seal bags is great news. The kit has self-seal bags for the other packs. Even if you don't have some scissors, you could perhaps tear open with your teeth, your hands, and try and get that number off to put in your bags. So. I'm going to say, out of all three kits, this is the summary review. Let's pop those aside for now. The easiest peasiest kit is the box. Didn't need anything extra whatsoever. Easy to pack. They are really flat, so you don't have to worry about getting them spoilt on the journey home. So easiest kit of all. I would say the next easiest to take away is the LED lights because the majority are in the self-seal bags. You may just need a pair of scissors to cut open the rounds. Again, I would recommend building at home. Then I would say the third kit is the mirror because they were all in the sealed packs and it, they still feel a little bit sticky, a bit tacky after completing. So again, if you're keeping your rounds, your special shapes, etc., a bit trickier, might need a bit of pre-planning to take some self-seal bags with you and a pair of scissors and maybe some mica powder to get rid of the stickiness if you want to use your mirror on holiday. So I hope you've enjoyed this holiday kit review and I hope that you've seen things that you might be interested in getting and I've helped with any decision making. Do please consider subscribing. I always enjoy hearing from you and if you are going on holiday, have a lovely summer. Take care everyone. Bye.